even though your ping is high, your movement isn't affected by that. You'll still feel fine in your movement, and your movement still will register fine to people. See, then I shot right at him and hit him straight on. But if it had been normally, if it had been running forwards at a normal speed, if I'd have shot there, by the time the second delay had come out, my reel had still gone there, but the dude had been forward, wouldn't I? So I'd have had to shoot in front of him, just a little bit in front of him. About a second worth of delay in front of him. And there you go, bang it a bit him straight on then. By that same method, aiming at people with high ping at long range is going to be a lot harder because the, the, obviously there's a bigger range difference, so therefore there's a bigger variance in your actual. You need to be more pinpoint of exactly where you're aiming. And that's hard enough to do with a, like a low ping, let alone a high ping. Get that douchebag. He doesn't seem to do all, and then as soon as he sees me, he goes, Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm all active now. Like, I've, gone, I've turned my bot mode on. Three, two, one. That's the, um, the general tips I can give you on high ping, guys. So, by the same method that long range is hard, short range will be easier. You can just shove the barrel down someone's face if you're at point blank with them. But it doesn't matter about the delay, you're still going to be point blank. You're not going to have to hit like a side of them or like in the middle or anywhere like that. You're just going to like, wherever you shoot, it's pretty much going to hit them in it as long as it comes out within that same time that you're still having your screen obscured by that guy in front of you. So feel free to jump in people's faces with high ping. Kind of like sneak up and ambush them and um, body block them. And you know, kind of like, if they shoot and you mi and they miss and then you shoot and you miss, just keep gaining ground on them, get in their face, because it will make it easier for you to hit. Obviously it makes them easier to hit you as well, but if they've got a lower ping, then you have, you've actually got the advantage if you think about it. So yeah, it's easier for him to hit you, but it's easy for him to hit you anywhere. So you may as well make it easy for yourself. It's going to be just as easy for him to hit you at medium as where it is close. Whereas you, it's going to be a lot easier for you to hit them at close range than where it is at middle and long range, so do close distance on them. If you expect your rumble bow sound as well guys, like someone's hurt, you think, oh shit, I, there's someone down there, so chances are he's heard me. Double back on yourself, or be random in your movement, don't be predictable. Same goes like when you're having a firefight, don't just kind of do this, strafing left and right on the same spot. Because a smart guy will just shoot right in the... If you're strafing left and right, the exact kind of thing you're just doing this. Especially if you're doing that, you're strafing left and right. You're doing fuck all there, guy. If you're just strafing left and right, I feel like you think you're kind of like you're being all dodgy and evasive and stuff like that, but you're not. You're exactly on the same fucking spot. So all you've got to do is shoot you right in the fucking middle and there you go, you will go down. Even doing like that, that's still not enough. Because all smart players do is shoot right in the middle and he's going to fucking hit you on that second reel even if he misses the first one. So you need to kind of like be using your... Be using your dash key. And even like wall jumping off and be acting all weird and just unpredictable. Like don't keep going left and right. Like go right and then you go into right and then it's like oh to left. Oh wait, I'll go to left. I'll just to left a bit more. To right. To, to right. Left. Right. Oh wait, I'll jump off that. Oh wait, I'll go down. No, what? I'll jump off that. Oh, I'll go in here and stuff like that. Defensive maneuvers are always stronger than aggression as well, guys. Always. If you force someone to come to you, you've got the added advantage that, especially if you like, say, if I was fighting somebody near, or I was fighting somebody coming up the steps, I've got the height advantage so I can use the kind of like this ledge bit here. To kind of like, all I've got to do is move backwards, and if a guy was say stood there, then all I've got to do is peek over the edge and I can see him, and I can see him from the top downwards. Whereas he can't, I, all I've got to do is move backwards, and he can't hit me because of the um, obstruction. Whereas he's still down on this bit, so all I've got to do is peek over, and he's got no kind of like terrain covering him. Whereas I've got this thing protecting me here. Do use terrain. Do use the surroundings. The surroundings are your friend. They will um, provide you with much needed cover. I mean, sometimes people think, oh, you know, covering like first person games doesn't mean for an awful lot. It does. Vantage points and cover do add up to an awful lot. Do use them. Do use them. So guys, I hope that was um, a little bit helpful for you. There's a few general tips there. How to some just I mean, a lot of people will know this kind of stuff, but it's just basic kind of tips. So if you don't, not everyone does. Not everyone does. Oh, one last thing I would like to recommend is um, team aspect setup. You see, force a team color. Put that to yes. Force team model yes, and force them. 
so you can see down here, see what it says here, switch my team to show all teams alpha, so that means everyone on your team if you're playing a team game will be that model. And it says, show teamless players as team beta players. Well that will, that also means that anyone that's not on your team, so basically anyone that's not on your team, whether it's free for all or it's the opposing team, they will always be the beta team. And I would recommend you set that to a nice flat colour, whatever colour you think is best and most clear for you to see. I use bright green. And make sure it's on full bright as well, not default. It might look a bit shit in comparison guys, but it is a lot easier. In fact, it's not, you don't even struggle to see that really, it does look a lot nicer, but I like it on full bright. Make sure it's a big model as well, no point having that. That's a bit too small isn't it? That's not too bad, but make it a big, you know, make it a big model, it makes it easy for yourself. Make sure your false team models on. You could change whatever colour you wanted. Make it pure white if you wanted. Although I wouldn't recommend it because um, your crosshair is pure white, so change your crosshair colour if you intend to do that. <laughs> so yeah, foster team colour guys. It doesn't matter too much about what kind of um, model you use yourself. I use that one purely because I don't mind the um, the last jumping away. I've always used last since Quake 2 and stuff, I always use last models. UT, Quake 2, etc. I just find it better to uh, hear last going, huh, huh, huh. Huh? Rather than a do going, uh, 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 uh. Not that is a big difference, but also uh, the, one of the main reasons in the olden days, which is why I still do it now, it's just out of habit. One of the main reasons people used um, female models is because they were slightly smaller. So therefore, before the days of bright skins and all that lot, where like kind of like built into them like was for the days of bright skins then you would be a little bit small to see so therefore you would um, be had a hit as you would expect and you would try to set everyone else's model to a big nasty chunky model so that they stand out like a soft one that's basically the general gist guys but like I said don't worry too much about your own model though because if anybody that's good enough to kind of like own you anywhere they'll have you set to a certain model whatever they want anyway so it doesn't matter at all just say whatever model sounds at least annoying to you so there you go guys, a general rundown of um, Warsaw. Well, last thing as well, if they ever give you an IP, say on the shout box because I've arranged a game, if they ever give you an IP, it will be like in this kind of like format, 1 to 3, that 1 to 3, that 1 to 3, colon, blah 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 blah. So basically all you do is you'll press the tilde key, or tile, I call it tile but I think everyone else calls it tilde, so whatever. It's the key directly to the left of 1, tilde. Type connect space and then type in the IP that you're given. In fact if you're given an IP you'll be able to copy and paste it in as well. And it'll look something like that and there you go you connect. I won't try it because it won't connect to anything. There is no server called 123.123.123.3445. Anything else I could run through? Yeah, I keep thinking that I've done it all and I think I have. Look out for it. Don't forget the guys there's actually some tutorials in the game as well. There's a couple there. I went into a little bit more depth, but they might be a bit clearer on the bunny up in the way I am, so just do feel free to give those a look as well. So there you go guys, I hope that was um, a bit helpful for you, if you didn't know. I'm sure you might have been able to um, gain a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of knowledge in old war so. Because it does make it a lot more fun when you know what you're doing, a lot more fun. Especially when you've got cool shit like double jumps and... Um, slides and you can actually move around the map correctly so you're not the only guy that's kind of like running around the map thinking oh my god everyone else can proper own the ship flying around the map and I can't even like move fast let alone do anything <laughs> so that will help you out a little bit like I said the easiest way is just make sure you're using your dash key and then just carry on pressing jump that will serve you well at the very minimum even if you can't learn strafe jumping yet and it is easy it's literally just holding down the strafe key while jumping so the exact same if there's bunny up and you're just holding down the strafe key but it will take you some practice to get used to kind of like releasing that strafe key so you can bunny up and get some control and as soon as you get a big run again going back into strafe jump which while you at that you can actually wall jump as well and keep it as well got to mention that to you so if you do want to keep your strafe jump up and you think you could get away with it fuck off bot strafe jump strafe oh I was just about to fucking jump off that wall as well you son of a bitch bot so guys there you go hope you enjoyed that and I shall catch you next time see you dudes